Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Ace on Music. I'm your host, Ace Trump. I'm joined as always by my cohort, Sean. What's going on, Ace? Well, this week I thought we'd have some fun. You know, growing up, there are certain things and events that shape our musical lives in a big, big way. And in a strange way, um, I have a little story to tell you to preface what we're going to talk about today. When I was a boy, my father was a carpenter, very talented carpenter, and I remember one time he took me uh, on one of his jobs, as he would on occasion, you know, where I'd clean up the messes or whatever, and I'd make a few dollars for the day. And on this particular house that we were servicing, I remember seeing on the coffee table in the room that we were working in was a stack of magazines, and among these magazines were National Lampoon, which I had never seen, and epic illustrated and probably most importantly heavy metal now i had been a comic book geek for a long time and loved comic books in every way shape and form but my mother was always a very avid fantasy reader and she turned me on to things like tolkien and various other things like that and heavy metal seemed to be a magazine with this incredible artwork that kind of addressed these stories in a much more adult way and it really enraptured me. I became a big fan of the magazine. And so in the, in the early 80s, I was very excited to hear the news that they were planning to make a, rec uh, a movie out of it, an animated film out of, out of the heavy metal movie. So <clears throat> going back to my father and his carpentry, at this particular time, he was making a, a uh, roller skater rink that they were very popular back in the early 80s, up in wherever. And I, I would go there in the evenings sometimes with my brother and we would get to roller skate and, and, and hang out and do that sort of thing. And I remember one day we went there and they had set up the DJ booth. And the DJ was playing some records to test out the sound system and everything. And, um, by the way, that's Boomer, my dog. You'll see him on occasion here, and he loves squeaky toys, so yeah, forgive it. that. <laughs> anyway, so we're at the roller skater rink, and suddenly the opening chords of Sammy Hagar's uh, title track to the heavy metal movie came over the massive sound system, and it was amazing. I was floored, and e each song played more and more. I was intrigued, and I ran out the next day, and I bought the heavy metal soundtrack. Now, if you want to talk about albums that change your life, that album literally was something that impacted me in ways that I still feel to this day. I think that you're probably in the same boat, right? Oh, me? Oh, yeah. My, my story's a little different. I'm, I'm a little Tell younger. Us. Well, I was, you know, I'm, I was born in 71, so... Uh, you know, I was 10 years old, so it was a big deal for me to see the uh, cartoon with boobs, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't remember what, it was at the Rhodium Drive-In, a local drive-in over here where, where we lived, and uh, it played, I think, with Fire and Ice, I believe it was a double feature animated series. Film, yeah. yeah, but what was going on in my life, I was just getting introduced to Van Halen and Black Sabbath and stuff from my cousin and Aerosmith growing up, and when I saw this movie, uh, the music and everything to me was a big deal. It's kind of weird, you know, but I discovered Black Sabbath, uh, Ronnie James Dio Black Sabbath through uh, through the heavy metal cart um, animated series, I meant cartoon. And, you know, I also discovered all these bands on the soundtrack. And I actually, when I heard the soundtrack, I went out and just tried to discover all these bands. I'm, You know, I didn't hear of Grand Funk Railroad and Trust and you know, bands like that, you know, I just went out and, and looked for the records because there was no, you know, internet or you couldn't really find these bands, you know, through social media. You had to investigate yourself reading magazines or going to your local record store. So it, it was a big deal to me. It turned me on to a lot of great music, you know, even like New Wave, Devo and Cheap Trick. I was introduced to Cheap Trick for the first time through, um, through this heavy metal soundtrack, so... Yeah, I think this is why we talk about it a lot, right? Because it just we do. It, hold, it holds dearly to us. When I, you know. Well, when I first heard, when I first heard it was being made, there was a couple of people whose names I knew well who were involved, and uh, the first one was the late great Ivan Reitman, 
I mean, here's a guy who brought us some of the greatest films of the last 50 years. This is a guy behind Animal House, Meatballs, um, the uh, Ghostbusters movie, even the new Ghostbusters, Howard Stern's Private Parts. I mean, the guy is just amazing. And can't forget one of my favorites, which is uh, the 3D film that was uh, with Molly Ringwald and uh, no, Adventures in the Forbidden... Um, for, for zone. <laughs> I've never heard of that. Okay. It was a Molly Reed wall. Um, and then the you? other one, you know, when I guess when they were trying to put this together, um, Ivan got involved with Irving Azoff, who is one of the big players in the music industry even to this day, manages bands like Van Halen and the Eagles and various other things, was the head of Ticketmaster for a while. And he was the one who helped them arrange this soundtrack, uh, the, at least the rock portions of it. The, there was also a lot of orchestral music that was done by Elmer Bernstein, who's also a famous composer on his own. And they did actually end up releasing that as an LP as well. If you're a collector, this is pretty cool. A lot of the stuff from like the Den sequence and various other pieces you'll hear in, on this record. But it was the collection of songs <clears throat> on the soundtrack that got to me. Many of the bands I'd heard of, several of them I had never heard of, and, you know, and the songs that were by the bands that I'd heard of were not songs that I was familiar with. You take Cheap Trick, for example. They had a couple of songs on there, which to this day remain some of my favorite Cheap Trick songs. But they're not in the canon. That you, I've never seen them live, and I've seen Cheap Trick a lot of times. Or you take songs like Devo. Now, when you talk heavy metal, you think, Devo? <laughs> what the heck is Devo doing on a heavy metal soundtrack? But... They did this amazing cover of this song from the 60s called Working in the Coal Mine. And it was just so perfect for the spot that they put it in. And for me as a fan of the magazine first, it was wonderful to see these things come to life. And But the songs were so good. I mean, that Tarna sequence at the end, which so many people uh, hold up as the strongest of all the chapters of the film... I mean, when the when the mutated uh, at attackers go after the village and they're playing Mob Rules from Black Sabbath, it's it was just the perfect pairing of a song. But I have to say, the song that probably affected me the most out of the whole record was from Blue Oyster Cult, and that was Veteran of the Psychic Wars. I mean, that song affected me so much that it launched me into a deep... Uh, investigation of Blue Oyster Cult that lasts to this day. I mean, they're one of my favorite bands of all time. I think they're just absolutely amazing. What what particular song stood out for you? That was, that was one, one of them, for sure. sure. And the Devo. Um, <laughs> and the Cheap, Cheap Trick song, too. too. That's, That's the first time I've ever heard Cheap, Cheap Trick, out, honestly. And I see all of them. <laughs> 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 but yeah, yeah, those, those uh, were, the, you know, and, and the Sammy Hagar, Hagar, of course. But well, you even take an artist like Stevie Nicks, who had had serious success with Fleetwood Mac, mm -hmm. had also been successful on her own with a lot of hits, Edge of Seventeen, various other tracks. And the track she had on this record was called Blue Lamp. And Blue Lamp was absolutely amazing track. To, the, to this day, still probably my favorite uh, Stevie Nicks song of all time. <laughs> but I mean you look at some of the other songs like Reach Out from Cheat Trick most people don't know that track it's an amazing track if you check it out on this one or even if you take um, songs like uh, Don Felder doing uh, Take a Ride on Heavy Metal I mean he had written some of the greatest songs for the Eagles I mean this is the guy who wrote Hotel California and he writes this song and it comes in the bomber sequence of the film it's just a crazy amazing song and then other songs that I never really probably would ever have explored, but like you take songs like uh, Donald Fagan, who was, of course, from, from uh, Steely, Dan. Steely Dan, and he did this song called True Companion, which was during the first sequence of the film. And it is not at all a song that really falls into my ballywick of styles and things like that, but there is something about this track that just blows me away every time I hear it and it's it's like the perfect fusion of jazz and classic rock and and that sort of thing so yeah I mean yeah, that, that got me uh, opened up, up to Steely Dan because when I 
first, first heard this soundtrack, I didn't know who Donald Fagan was when I was, was a kid. So, so I went out and I believed this, his, his first solo album was out by then. I forgot the name of that first solo album. I don't know. <laughs> I ended up getting that on a cassette and then I listened to Donald Fagan and then found out that it was part of Steely Dan and started listening to Steely Dan. It was one of my favorite rock bands of all time at that time. <laughs> Yeah, as a drummer. The only song on the soundtrack, which, I mean, it worked in the film. It's never been one of my favorites. Uh, and it's one of the few songs on the soundtrack that I knew before the soundtrack. And that's Open Arms from Journey. Um, very mellow, ballady song. But, I mean, it fits where they use it in the film because it comes at a very tender moment in the film. But only song on the soundtrack, which I never really felt really was should have been there. But um, that's just my opinion. <laughs> what about Trust? Well, Trust was interesting because, I mean, it's a French band. I had never heard of them before the heavy metal soundtrack. And besides a few occasional listings in a, an article here or there, and the fact that Nico McBrain from Iron Maiden was once a member of Trust, so there's some fame there. And so was Clive Burr. Was he really? Yeah, he was on, in the band. What do I know? Right? <laughs> but that is such a strong song, prefabricated. Um, and then you also take the track that um, Nazareth offered up here, um, which is a, a suitable case for treatment. Probably my in top three Nazareth songs of all time, but you never hear it anywhere else. I don't know if there was some kind of rights issues. I mean, there was rights issues when... Uh, when this film was to come out on DVD, they had never made licensing for all of those songs to go on to those other formats. And so there was a very long delay for this album to come, or this movie to come out on DVD for that very reason. But, um, yeah, I mean, an al it's one of those albums that I have been listening to for a better part of 40 years, and I still listen to it on a regular basis. And I don't mean just tracks. I mean, you put it on... You play it from beginning to end because it's just, and I don't know how many freaking copies of it I own. <laughs> I mean, I have my original LP. The one I showed you is one I just re recently got where it's a red vinyl reissue they just did. Um, I have it on on cassette. I have it on CD. I have it. I have the movie on Blu-ray on all kinds of different. I have it on video cassette. And then when I discovered <clears throat> last year, and I don't think that this gets enough enough attention and that is Elmer Bernstein's um, orchestral portions of this film they add so much to the film but they get ignored because of the power soundtrack that is around them and I, I can only imagine what this titan of music soundtracks uh, thought when he was asked to do the soundtrack to this crazy animated film that had all these heavy metal songs but when you hear some of the the brilliant uh, orchestral pieces that he has added to the film this this record is worth buying if you can find it on eBay or whatever it's not that easy to find but if you can find it it's worth your time it's worth your listening you know we're talking about albums that have changed our lives and I would definitely count the heavy metal soundtrack as one of them yeah going back to uh, Elmer Bernstein you know he's he started out in 1952 and you, if you if you look him up, the music he has created throughout the years since then, you'd be amazed at what he's done. He's done Slapshot. He's done Blues Brothers. He's done Ghostbusters. Um, he's even did uh, Disney's Black Cauldron. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, obviously the guy has a um, a love of the fantasy stuff. Maybe that's what attracted him to heavy metal. Right. <coughs> but. The one track that I think still needs to be mentioned and, and singled out here for tremendous performance is Sammy Hager's title track, Heavy Metal. I mean, one of the great songs that came out of this soundtrack. And we were lucky enough a few years ago, um, as part of our band management duties, occasionally one of the things that's very popular these days is these cruises where they make it all themed on, on a certain kind of music, where you go with a bunch of bands onto this cruise ship, you go to a destination for about two or three days, and there's two or three days of concerts, over and over and over. And we saw Sammy Hagar and the Circle perform there, and they did a version of this song with the singer who was in Quiet Riot at the time, <coughs> doing the vocals, and it was amazing. I mean... It was good the energy that comes off this song it's just 
It's got to be one of Sammy's best songs, I yeah, think. Yeah, I believe so. I, uh, for those of you who don't know this, I am, uh, if you haven't figured it out yet, I'm a major fan of this film. And uh, I'm going to give you a little look around at some of our collectibles in this place. but um, And that'll be, you'll hear my voice over it. But one of my most treasured pieces of heavy metal memorabilia as I have hanging on the wall up there is I actually, from the Tarna sequence, which is the last one in the story, the, the story is about this, you know, giant, giant green gem that converts all these people to evil and this champion um, Tarna, she comes and, and tries to, to fight the good fight, as it were. And there's a sequence where there's a mountain where the, 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 the giant gem crashes into and it floods all the green ooze that converts all the people into zombies. And I actually own the animation background of that particular sequence, the original painting they used to make that sequence, along with some of the cells that they used on it. And we'll show that to you a little bit later. I also have, you know, the movie posters. I have the the, uh, the statue they made of Tarna. We have a lot of fun stuff here about heavy metal. But uh, I still watch that movie on a regular basis. How many times do you think you've seen it? Oh gosh, thousands. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I you know I can't wait for it to come out in 4K. Yeah, I probably watch that movie two or three times a year at least. Yeah. You know, there are certain parts of it I like more than others uh, at times, like. My favorite sequences are definitely the bomber sequence and the Tarna sequence. They're two of my faves, but um, it's all it's all worth it. Check if you haven't seen the film, check it out. I know you want in Boomer. So anyway, anything else you want to say about the film? Me, um, I think we covered most of it. I mean, it's a great film, and it just it's just means a lot to me growing up and it's it's opened a whole new avenue in my life that it's just part of my history and culture now you know indeed yeah well i want to say thank you to my co-host sean and also to mark highlands our video editor and and technical guru behind the camera and uh remember we uh you can talk to us on twitter you can go to our facebook we're looking to have feedback from you anytime. You can also email us at acetalksmusic at gmail.com because Boomer would love to hear from you too. And uh, we also are on Patreon where we have our After Hours show. We're trying something new now on the Patreon show where we're going to tell stories for when we were on tour with our bands. All kinds of crazy stuff happens when we're on the road. So there's some of those stories I can tell you. So I thought you'd enjoy hearing some of them. And in the meantime... Until we do the next episode, take care of yourself and be safe. Talk to you later.